Hello and welcome everyone to Porsche Cup Challenge. These are the America Division drivers. Here we go. This is Circuit de Villeneuve, Canada, Montreal. And this is essentially home track for me. Uh, I'm Canadian, of course. Not from Montreal, but I do really love that city of Montreal. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful city. Lots of good history. Some of the oldest history in Canada. Of course, the history here is not that old. And um, so when you have a city like Montreal, you really cherish it because you know what? 200 years old is old for this country. <laughs> so, you know, there's also that. But um, we have some truly heavy hitters coming at us this evening. Looks like a few people are choosing not to qualify, so you're not going to see them up on our timing tower quite yet. Uh, right now, it's looking like Adam Schmidt, who's the leader in our championship right now, is on pole position. Jason Lyons, who's in P2 for our championship, is in P... Sorry, did I say Adam, Sch Adam Schmidt is P2? No, Adam Schmidt is P1 on pole. Jason Lyons, who's in P2, is um, in P2 in this race in qualifying. So that's going to be really interesting. Right now, I've just got for fun, uh, I don't like to do this too often, is I rating is up on the screen on the charts. And it's not always the greatest telltale of how fast or slow a person is. Um, I've noticed that I rating is mostly a reflection of how much time you've got. If you have the time to continually register for races and farm that up and build that up, you're going to have a higher I rating. You can really find some magical drivers, as you can see right now, to, uh, Jason Lyons, 2.1k I rating. That's not a lot. And he's up there in second position. So it, it really does go for showing how I rating doesn't mean as much as you think. So I just thought I'd share that. And uh, when I bring up, we have actually a driver here who has 8.4 thousand I rating. There you go, now you can see it. Dan is way back with 3.9. So we have some guys with some serious I rating. Uh, I'm gonna just pull that away because I don't like, show, how do I get rid of that? There we go. I don't like showing that forever um, because I like to focus on everyone's race, how they're doing, and yeah. So let's pull up that starting grid. I'm gonna hide away that timing tower so you can take a look at who's starting where. We've got Adam Schmidt on pole position, of course. In P1, Jason Lyons is gonna be joining him on that front row. Michael Carrillo has had a lot of good luck lately. Ed Eisenring is up in fourth. The Flipper is in fifth. Bill Haynes in sixth. Jose Maria, good luck, bad luck, mostly bad luck, to be honest, for Jose Maria lately, ends in P7. Hopefully that turns around for him today. Shannon Mothral is in 8th. Dan Marrera is in ninth. Gary Watson in 10th. Tyler Mariglia in 11th. Nicholas Nold way back. I guess he just decided not to qualify. And there's the list of non-qualifiers right there. That's quite a list, I gotta say. Um, not even gonna mention them because they didn't even qualify. Here we go. You can hear that the engines are revving. Lights are off and away we go. Here we go right now into turn one. Adam Schmidt's getting an excellent launch. Excellent, excellent launch. Adam Schmidt, here we got three wide with gary watson is he going to be losing some positions he's going slow around the inside tyler merigula making the best of that one making some passes oh wow gonna have some two wide through this first chicane everyone's giving nice amount of space gary watson bleeding positions let's pull up that timing tower to see exactly what's happening and i want to see who are the biggest gainers, ma makers, and shakers of this race? Gene Rivera there, making some spots as well. So we're going to head right up to... There we go. That is Adam Schmidt. Jason Lyons is in second. Michael Carrillo. There is Ed Heisenring. It looks like everyone is very much in contact with each other. Nice chicane, absolutely. 
Where is 777 County? I gotta, I gotta ask, where is that, guys? Okay, I wanna actually get a look at the chop review. Oops. Let's get a look at, at the chop review as we head up into the final chicane. This is Nicholas Nold in car 21. Oh, it looks like Bill Haynes. Is that Bill Haynes? No, it's Jose Maria. And Bill Haynes, oh, Bill Haynes getting a little bit wild. Nicholas Noel going up the inside into that very first chicane. And there is Nicholas Noel now up six positions total. Jose Maria is exactly where he started. Let's go back to the TV views as they head around the circuit of Montreal. So Adam, Sh Adam Schmidt having a pretty eventful yet boring race up at the very front it looks like most of these drivers haven't gained or lost too many spots and that's both good and bad this it's just showing the absolute high level of difficulty that this track has when it comes to passing so tyler marigula is down four spots i'm gonna have to guess that he's had a spin or a crash or something there is dan maria i you know what we, we've not... Oh, did Nicholas Nold spin? He's gotten a slowdown. And this is going to add absolute chaos into the field. Nicholas Nold getting that slowdown. So he's going to have to let a lot of drivers by him. And now he's back behind Damerere. There's just... You know what? I didn't expect this much to be going on. This is incredible, incredible racing. Stan Marrera going to give up that inside into the chicane nice and easy. It looks like he's going to give it up. Nicholas Nold is going to have an easy run through this chicane. That is a colorful car. And wow, and that I did not expect that. Nicholas Nold to back out, to be the one backing out. Looking a little further ahead, we have quite a battle here with Jose Maria. This is a absolute massive drs train bill haynes making the move up the inside on jose maria he's gonna go have to go around the outside and not have a lot of luck doing that one and oh and he, is he gonna stop no the race must go on race must go on it never ends troy the best softball pitcher for real <laughs> troy is that troy Deltano, this guy way back here. I guess he can throw a fastball, a slow ball, a high ball, a, a I don't know what ball, but uh, maybe maybe not so much drive. Unfortunately for Gene Rivera, let's see how did that one take place. Here is Gene Rivera. What did happen to Gene Rivera? So you can see Nicholas Nold up ahead is. Oh, and just a little bit of a bump. He misjudged the braking zone. And that is exactly how Jean Rivera made his little spin class happen. Very lucky for, I think that was Dan Marrera that he had that slight bump with. I want to take a look at the blimp view. How does this look? This looks absolutely bloody well excellent, I gotta say. Um, we may just stick with this one. Let me see if I can turn up those car sounds and see if we can still get these sounds coming through the microphone for you guys. I'm going to turn down my microphone a little bit. And there is Adam Schmidt, as you can see, heading into turn one, turn two, turn three sequence right there. And this is a four car battle for the lead with Adam Schmidt, Jason Lyons, Michael Carrillo, Ed Heisingring. And that is excellent. A little bit further back, you got Jose Maria with Shannon Mothra. So Jose Maria had some cars following along with him, and he's able to fend them off and stay all the way up in the fifth position. So, okay, now, here is Gary Watson. He is battling it out here with Bill Haynes. It looks like Bill Haynes is a So. We were mentioning Troy. You said Troy, soft, softball pitcher. Okay, here you go. Here is Troy Deltano coming into turn one. Let's see, how does Troy make turn one happen? I don't think he does. A little bit of a mm, misjudgment. Um, we'll have to show you exactly how to turn one later. When you follow along with the leaders of this race when they head to turn one. Where are they right now? They're heading through the hairpin. Jason Lyons closer than ever closer than ever <laughs> but 
beautiful drift you say. Yeah, it was pretty fun drift, eh? It's it's fun, just not fast. So here is here's Adam Schmidt at the very front. He has four cars following him, not able to break that draft. And you want to see how exactly do you take turn one, turn two, turn three? How does that work? Uh, let's get a good view right here. Here is Adam Schmidt under braking. He is going to cut across and hit that apex best he can. Carry all that speed and finish his braking right there. Jason Lyons is almost being attacked by the car behind and Ising Ring. Oh, and Michael Carrillo has spun. Michael Carrillo has spun and he's gone from third down into fourth position and so that's going to bring him one spot down. Adam Schmidt is still up in that lead and this four car battle has become a three car battle. I'm going to take a look here now at Jose Maria. Does he have anyone following him? It looks like he does. He's got Shannon Mothral, Nicholas you know what? I gotta pull up everyone's full name. What is everyone's first and last name? So there you go. Now you can see exactly who it is, first and last name. I see Flipper Straffarelli has crashed. So I do have a few crashes. Let's take a look at how they happen. So here's the Flipper's crash. He was right up near the front and a little bit too much goose in it. And he just made a little bit of a spin and off he went. Looks like he's now at the very back. So I got Jean Rivera has crashed. So how does Jean Rivera crash? Okay, so we've seen this one. Bill Haynes. Here is the crash with Bill Haynes. How did this one happen? Oh, and that, you know what? That's a whole lot of that code. I feel bad for that one. I think we all got to feel bad for that one. That one is not so pretty. Not so pretty at all. We have a few new guys in our race today, and so I just want to give a nice big shout out. We got Dan McFarlane. I'm hoping I'm saying that one correctly. Dan McFarlane, welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge. Hope you're enjoying your first race, especially here at Montreal, this street circuit. This is quite an intense race. Oh, and Jason Lyons. What has happened to Jason Lyons? Let's take a look. How did Jason Lyons crash? He's coming down this back straightaway. And did he miss his braking zone? Oh, and he takes the escape road. Oh, and that is going to lose so many positions for Jason Lyons. Luckily, he is still in that reverse grid top eight. So he is going to be able to be at the very front row starting our 30 minute feature. Nicholas Moult making some moves, trying to get ahead. Anyway, so I was just mentioning we have here Dan McFarlane, who is actually in this mix right here. There's Shannon Mothraw going up the inside of Jose Maria. Jose Maria going real, real wide on that hairpin and bleeding more positions than I'm sure he would have liked. And now he's got the likes of Dan McFarlane up the inside heading into this chicane. Is Dan going to be able to get that track position on him? Oh, it looks like Jose Maria is showing some defensive lines. Where are the... Showing some defensive lines. And so Dan is going to be able to stay ahead. Another newcomer that we've got here with us tonight, Don Hunter. Uh, I'm not sure how she drifted like Troy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here is Don Hunter. I'm not sure how he found the league. Welcome to a Porsche Cup Challenge. I, you know, that's like a toy box, um, toy box car, isn't it? That paints color scheme right there. But uh, Bill, uh, Bill Haynes is behind him. Gary Watson is behind him. Gene Rivera is behind him. A whole bunch of drivers behind him. Don Hunter is up five positions total. Did not qualify. That's brave, I gotta say. <coughs> and so this is another one of the newcomers we've got tonight. Now, of course, the other newcomer is Troy, who you already know. It seems like our viewers here are uh, absolutely in love with Troy, who's at the very back. You know what? You know, he's got the peanut gallery following him. So, you know, hopefully in the next race, he'll do a lot better. Anyways, we're going to head right back up to the very lead of this race. We got Adam Schmidt is now 2.3 seconds 
ahead of Ed Eisenring. Wow. Wow. So Adam just throwing down that consistency. And you know what? It's all about who, who finishes the race first after 15 minutes. You don't have to have that fastest lap. It's who gets to the end of that racetrack, that finish line, the fastest through a length of time. Uh, so you can be the fastest driver alive. But you know what? If you can't keep consistency, you ain't going anywhere. That's all that's to it. And do we have Dan McFarlane making a move up the inside on Jose Maria? Jose Maria is going to have a shorter distance to travel around turn two. And so he's going to be able to keep his position. Jason Lyons a little bit further back. He is in P8. If I was in Jason Lyons' shoes, I think that I would actually stop battling and just be happy with P8. But of course, he does have Dan Maria just behind him. So it's going to be really tight. Oh, who's that? Who is that? Bill Haynes. Is that Bill Haynes going off the track right there? Let's take a look. How did this one happen? I think this is all self-inflicted. This is a complete self-inflicted injury. Oh, and into the wall all on his own. I hope that car survives. Bill Haynes now having dropped all the way down. Ooh. That, is, that may be a race-ending collision there on that one. That that may be a race-ending collision. Unfortunately, <laughs> here's Jean Rivera coming around. This is one of the chicanes. You know, whoever designed this track, they said, Hey, do you like ch chicanes? I don't know if you like chicanes, but you're going to love chicanes once you're done this race track, I guarantee it. And that's pretty much what we've got here. We've got... A chicane, and then a chicane, and then another chicane, and just, I don't know, it's just, see, look at this, another chicane. Oh, and there goes Shannon into the hole, and that's going to allow Jose Maria and Dan McFarlane to make a pass. And is that going to allow Shannon, Shannon may be bleeding another position to Jason Lyons? Nope, not quite. So is Dan McFarlane going around the outside into turn two on Jose Maria? Is he going to be able to finally get it done it looks like he has finally made that pass so now Dan is up eight spots total into P5 and you know what every position counts heard Tyler has Ligma Tyler has Ligma I'm not sure what that one means but you know I, I don't think Tyler's doing to what so well 14 seconds behind I think that he's had a few crashes <laughs> that's what I'm gonna have to say on that one um, but I can't look there right now because all of the action is here with Jose Maria, Shannon Mothra, Jason Lyons, and Dan Marrera. Dan Marrera with 38 seconds to go is fighting for that last spot in the reverse grid. And of course, if you don't know, we have a reverse grid top eight into our 30 minute feature. What does that mean for these drivers? If you're in the eighth position in this race, you start the next race in first. So Dan Marrera has to fight with everything that he's got to get into that front row start in this next race. It's going to be Shannon Montreal and Jason Lyons starting the next race at the very front. Adam Schmidt here, who's the leader of this race currently, this 15-minute race, um, he's going to be starting in P8 on the grid. So... That's going to make it super, super interesting. Clearly, you can see Adam Schmidt has the pace. Jason Lyons making up a position. Shannon Mothral. Oh, and he is now out of that reverse grid top eight. Shannon Mothral had a slowdown from that final chicane. That's the only way that he would be slowing down. I know Shannon, he is not slowing down for anyone unless he absolutely has to. And that cause would be the slowdown from that final chicane. So I'm gonna just take a quick peek. Michael Carrillo looks like he's catching up to Ed Heisingring here in P2. Car number one, two, nine. He's making up some time to Ed. He is one of our Costa Rican drivers. It's Michael Carrillo with, where is Dan Marrera? Dan Marrera is the other Costa Rican driver. What happened, Ed Heisingring? Oh, no, he's still there. 
And here comes Adam Schmidt coming through that final chicane for the very last time. There is Ed Eisenring. Nicholas Null is six seconds behind. He is not going to be able to make up any time. It looks like there's not going to be many more passes in this heat race. Here goes Adam Schmidt crossing the finish line, winning our sprint race. Congratulations, Adam Schmidt, for the win of that 15-minute sprint race. Michael Creel is going to be coming in second third sorry michael Grio in third ed eisenring in second great job guys there is nicholas noah coming through in fourth position dan mcfarlane up eight spots total jose maria jason lyons after his spins still going to be starting in that front row there shannon mothral able to make it back on dan maria dan maria maybe did not want to start up the fair front there's don hunter gary watson Jean Rivera, he is not finished yet. He is just coming across nice and chill. And then we're gonna take a quick look at Tyler. I think Tyler, I, I think Tyler got distracted. Um, yeah, you did hear a baby on the microphone. I'm, uh, I'm now currently, <laughs> that's funny. I'm, um, I'm now a dad times two. I, uh, I have a three and a half year old and then a baby who is now, I think, 10 days old. Only about 10 days old now. And so, yeah, you did hear a baby on the microphone. I'm holding the baby right now because I guess I'm on dad duty and that's just how it goes. <laughs> Uh, it's the only way that the broadcast can happen, and this is exactly why I cannot race, is because I'm on dad duty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I guess my life right about now. Broadcasting is a lot easier than doing, uh, racing, because I've got a little baby wrap, so he's attached to my body. And then um, I can walk around the house, do all the things. I can do all the clicky clicky on the, the mouse and the keyboard and the computer. And uh, yeah, so then the broad broadcast. <laughs> so hopefully my wife is sleeping right now so she can get her sleep. So she can wake up 10 times tonight because oh, I'm going to wake up anyways. I'm, who am I kidding? Anyways, so I'm going to pull up. Is this going to come up? There we are. There we go. Um, there is our Heat 1 results. And remember that reverse grid top 8. Whoever's in first will be in 8th. Whoever's in 2nd is going to be in 7th and all the way down. But congratulations once again for Adam Schmidt winning that Heat race. Great, great job. I'm really curious to see how this next one goes with this reverse grid. Uh, Ed Eisenring having one of the greatest results I think he's had so far in Porsche Cup Challenge League races. Michael Carrillo up in third. Nicholas Nold in fourth. Up a lot of spots to end up in fourth there. Dan McFarlane, welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge. Hope you enjoy your stay and, you know, hope you're here for a good, good time and a long time. Uh, Jose Maria Jason Lyons able to recover into a good spot for his 30 minute feature in seventh. Dan Marer, Don Hunter almost into that reverse grid top eight. Don Hunter his first time here. Gary Watson, Jean Rivera, Jan Mothra just I don't know he looks like he's way way down. Tyler Mergula just crashing off into the walls. Uh, Troy I think Troy and Tyler are friends or something because they just love kissing walls. They want to get as much cement onto their car panels as possible. <laughs> Bill Haynes, a little bit of a spin. Flipper Straffarelli, I'm quite sad to see Flipper. Uh, you know, his real name is not Flipper. It's just a nickname I've given him. It's Felipe Straffarelli. I'm just as shocked with anyone with my result. It says Adam Schmidt. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. It is well-deserved, honestly. But uh, Flipper Straffarelli all the way down in 16th. I'm a little sad to see that one. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I got to say three, point, three key points of this next race. Uh, number one. Number one is honestly just don't spin. Number two is don't hit the walls. And number three is be as consistent as possible without losing, without losing it and without pulling in a slowdown. And you're going to finish well. Uh, I think that's all that's to it. I'm going to take this away and a uh, little bit of a cluster bomb of overlays in front of your face right about now. Uh, but it looks like I've got it all together. So Dan Marrera is actually going to be starting on the front row there with Jason Lyons. 
Jose Maria, Diane McFarland, Nicholas Nold, Michael Carrillo, Ed Isingring, Adam Schmidt. <laughs> My girlfriend will touch me, so the walls will have to do. Oh, I. Good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that, Tyler. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's take a look at the very front of this race. Here we go. The lights are going up. There's the three lights, four lights, five lights. Lights are off and away we go. Looks like Dan Maria, did he get an excellent start? Let's take a look at that blimp camera view as they head into turn one. And there is Jason Lyons. He's trying to be as aggressive as possible. And Jason Lyons is now in the lead of this race. And here we go, heading into the very first chicane. Nicholas Nolan has gained a few spots. Dan Maria is just down a lot of spots. Oh, and Michael Creo has spun. Sorry, I'll just have to change the position of my baby. <laughs> time the baby starts getting fussy sorry about this don't worry we are still alive <laughs> okay okay I think that he wants to like Poo or something. I have no idea. So I'm. <laughs> uh, you know what? Hey, at least the action is still still alive. I'm trying to multitask right here. The most unprofessional thing that you've ever seen, I'm sure, or heard the most unprofessional thing you've ever heard of. But uh, it's happening, boys. The baby knows no boundaries. So there is Jose Maria Dan McFarlane. He is trying to gain some spots on Jose Maria. There you go, just like the heat race. It, it, it does exactly how Dan made a pass in the first one on Jose Maria. Okay, so Nicholas Noel. baby to get fed. <laughs> okay, so there is Nicholas Knoll. He is up two spots total. Okay. I'm trying my best here, folks. Just a second. I have to walk this baby around, I think, a little bit.
Okay. So. Okay, I'm back. I, I really apologize about that. Okay, so. Okay, I'm back. I am sorry about that. The um, baby calls. The nature calls, and that's sort of how that one goes. Anyways, what did I miss? Holy smokes, did I miss quite a bit. So we've got here, Jason Lyons is not in first position anymore. It's Dan McFarland. We have... Let's see, how did this one happen? So how did Dan make a pass on Jason Lyons? How did this one happen? Okay, so it looks like Jason Lyons, Lyons got a little bit wild on the exit of turn six, and that allowed for an easy exit of Dan all the way up the inside and take the lead of this 30 minute race. And that explains how Dan is here ahead of Jason. We got Adam Schmidt is up five positions total. How did that one happen? Here is one of the passes here. This is Adam Schmidt on Ed Eisenring. Same turn, much better exit up the inside. That is an easy flyby, and there they go. There they go. Let's see a few other movers and shakers, and I want to jump into the blimp view because look at that. Most of these drivers are still here. It looks like Troy didn't even start, unfortunately. So there's Troy being passed by Michael Carrillo. How did Michael Carrillo go off track? Let's take a look at how this one happened. Here is Michael Carrillo. This is the very first lap. As you're seeing it right here, this is a replay. A lot, whole lot of net code. That is an unfortunate bump for Michael Carrillo. He's not going to know that was net code until after the race, unfortunately, for him. And that is just absolutely unlucky, I got to say. I'm not sure. Maybe that contact was going to happen anyways, but... Um, yeah, Nicholas Noel, he was down three positions. How did this one happen? Jose Maria passed Nicholas Noel, so let's see what happened. Did Nicholas Noel get a slowdown? So this is Nicholas Noel, yup, he got a slowdown on that final corner, and he had to give up a whole bunch of positions. And that is exactly how Nicholas Noel jumped from the very lead pack of drivers back into P8, as you see it right here. making that move up the inside on Jose Maria. Jose Mir Maria giving that one up easy just to make this a um, little bit easier for him because Jose Maria, you can see, has a whole bunch of cars behind him. Oh no! Let's take a look at that. How did that one happen? Nicholas Nold. Oh, that is gonna be game changing, and I've, I, I, that is unexplainable, absolutely unexplainable. And that's put Ed Eisenring from a position that he was, he was in a real great spot, I gotta say. And he is now all the way back into P12. And that's just part of the street circuit. Uh, you can see he's now got Michael Creel directly behind him. So he has a whole bunch of cars that he has to catch up to and then try and make passes on. So this is going to be really, really interesting to see how this unfolds. Don Hunter. Wow, look at Don Hunter go. He's up five spots total. He is in P4 with a whole flock of cars behind him who want his spot. But uh, you know what, who's got it? Don Hunter's got it right here as he heads into that final corner. This is, I gotta get the names of this track. Uh, I know this is the final corner. This is turn 13, turn 14. But um, I think that's the wall of champions as they say. Let me see.
Yeah, that is it. The Wall of Champions. Just as I thought. I don't know this track super well. To be honest, I just recently purchased this track here on iRacing. And, um... Yeah, I just recently purchased it and just really recently learned it. So, here's Shannon Mothra really up the rear bumper of Jose Maria. Is he going to be able to make it happen as they head down that back straight? Going to get the inside? Maybe, maybe not. On Jose Maria, is he going to go for that dive? He's going to back out and take the safe way through these corners. Dan Marrera, well, look at this. Dan Marrera is down nine, pos seven positions total. Bill Haynes is now behind him, up six. There's the flipper. The Flipper Straffarelli, he is up six spots after his horrible, horrible sprint race. There's Dan, wow, Dan going very wide out of that final hairpin, and that is opening up the door for Bill Haynes up the inside. Dan Marrera now tucking in behind, choosing to take the easy way out. And I gotta say, this track is it's a very interesting one because it's extremely, extremely difficult to pass. Let's be honest here. Uh, passing is not an easy task. You can have a second pace on someone and the chances of you passing someone are, they're still low. They're still very, very low. Let's be honest. Um, you have to wait for someone to make a mistake. You have to wait for someone to make a mistake just like that. Jean Rivera getting a little bit wild on the exit of that corner. Uh, fortunately for Jean Rivera, there is no one behind him. So he didn't have to worry about losing his spot. But you know what? It's those little mistakes that can really eat you alive. That can be one spot, that can be three spots, that can be five spots. And all of a sudden you're racing someone you just didn't want to be around. And they are they just are not exactly your race. And, and that's how it goes. Minimizing mistakes, minimizing slowdowns. That's going to be the name of the game here. Oh, up the middle. Oh! Oh, I'm speechless. Gene Rivera making a move up the inside, locking up under braking, and that's thrown Jose Maria in a spot I'm sure he did not want to be. He was all the way up there in fourth, fifth, sixth, and now he is all the way down into ninth position. Gene Rivera, um, he had a decent run going for himself, and... Um, just not anymore. Jose Maria is going to have to run into the pits and get that fast repair. And that is going to be a good decision, to be honest, to take that fast repair. It looks like Jean Rivera is following suit. Gary Watson, he's one of our consistent drivers. He is here every week. He decides to try and keep it safe, not get into too many crashes. And right here, you can see it's paying off. Gary Watson is up one spot into ninth. And oh! Right there live, that is Jason Lyons getting a slowdown. And then, oh, where is his wing? I don't know if he got a slowdown, but he's... Where is Jason Lyons' wing? How did that happen? Okay, so... I have no idea how Jason Lyons lost his wing, but that is definitely, definitely going to hurt him through the long run of this race. Uh, the flipper is going to be able to find a way through that in no time, I guarantee it. But I have a few notifications I want to go through that I've seen pop up on my screen. I got Tyler Mariglia has crashed. So here is crash number one. And I say crash number one because I'm getting multiple crashes from Tyler. So here's number one. Oh yeah, so here's, here's number two. That's the same crash, that's, that's not so exciting. Anyways, I got Dan Marrero. Okay. 
Okay, so that's not a crash. I, I don't think that one counts. <laughs> Let's be honest, that one doesn't count. I still have no idea how Jason Lyons lost that rear wing. I'm trying to find a notification somewhere as a sign of how that would have happened and I'm seeing absolutely nothing so uh, we're just gonna have to sit by and understand that there's a rear wing missing he has a whole bunch of downforce missing and uh, you know it just it totally happened there's the flipper he's trying to take advantage of a damaged car in front of him but not quite able to make that stick not able to get that overlap in time and so Jason Lyons still staying ahead in sixth position. Bill Haynes, look at Bill Haynes. He is up 10 spots total. So Bill is having quite a good race. So we now have 13 minutes left. So this is Don Hunter. He is now gonna be under attack by Shannon Mothraw. There is the flipper Straffarelli making the pass on Jason Lyons. Is he going to be able to make it still? And there goes the flipper. And this is what we've come to expect from Philip Straffarelli, honestly. Uh, is a little bit of a spin. You know what? He has a really, really good pace. Let's be honest. He is a, he is a very kind guy. Um, can't really say anything bad about him very very nice man and um, he just has a lot of unfortunate and unlucky situations when he's able to turn that around and and erase all of those bad times he's going to be one serious threat on the racetrack i guarantee you that absolutely guarantee you that so watch for the flipper straff for Elliot to be that guy to watch one season or another. I'm not sure if it'll be next season or the end of this season. I have no idea. But I guarantee you, he is going to be one force to be reckoned with. Just maybe not right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, here's Don Hunter. And this is the challenge of Montreal right now. So there's a few things I'm going to take note of and, and watch um, and get our viewers to to look at and that is our timing tower you can see Dan is in P1 and Adam is in P2 6.5 seconds and so there's 11 minutes 40 seconds left let's see after say three minutes four minutes what is that interview interval so is, is it going to be Adam is making up time to Dan or is he not making up time so only time will tell funny um, but take a look at that timing tower and you'll be able to see if he's gaining or losing and who has the pace. So it's always interesting to watch that, I find. So Shannon Mothral, as I was mentioning had, uh, before, the, with this very tough to pass track, is really struggling to find a way through Don Hunter. Don Hunter having the race of his life here, I'm sure. He is all the way up into P3. This is one of the, this is, is the final podium position in our feature race. And after 20 minutes to go, he is currently in third. So this is an absolute wonderful drive here from Don. Shannon Mothrell has got to find that way through if he wants that final podium. But you know what? Don't look too far away because you got Bill Haynes who really wants to get one of those spots as well. Jason Lyons, still no rear wing. I don't think it's coming back. No no wing in sight. Dan Marrera, who started on that front row, he is down six positions total. Uh, Michael Carrillo, where is Michael Carrillo? Here we are, there is Michael Carrillo in that purple machine. The other Costa Rican driver there is Dan Marrera. Well, the Costa Rica driver, he is number one Costa Rica driver. Here is number two Costa Rica driver. And I say that jokingly. Uh, there is no number one or two. But anyways, here is Gary Watson. And unfortunately, Jose Maria, after that contact, is all the way into 10th. Hopefully he can gain some of those spots back. So, I have a few 
New notifications. How did Flipper Straff Riley crash again? How did that that I think dude just saw a squirrel. Okay. That okay, so we saw that one before. I think he I think dude just saw a squirrel because like why would you even go into that wall? Um, that's either target fixation or you know what you've already lost your mind and you're frustrated So you just end up in the wall and it looks like Don Hunter is actually gonna be challenged by Shannon Mothra as we head into the final turn of this track into the wall of champions and this is Shannon Mothra up the inside is Don gonna play it smart play it safe Oh, a little bit of a bump from Shannon. That may have been unintentional, but Don able to stay ahead of Bill Haynes a little bit of a bump no worse for the wear as they head across that start finish line and then now shannon mothral is up into that final podium position so bill haynes is the next one who's going to have to try and find his way through if he wants it bad enough uh i'm going to take a quick peek at the leader of this race and you know what here we go with lap time history and there you have it folks there it is so it looks like adam schmidt was almost three seconds faster on lap 12. uh dan had a 140.918 so so you know what that lap and a few laps after that may come back to haunt him uh, I don't have any notification for exactly what happened. I'm going to have to throw my money at that was a slowdown. Um, but 4.6 seconds and we were at 6.5 previously. And now these two drivers, they can actually see each other in the distances. So, you know what? There's a chance. There's, there's totally, totally a chance. Dan taking those curves like a boss through the final corner onto that start finish straight right there. Uh, I'm going to have to guess that though that um, with six minutes left, six and a half minutes, I don't think Adam Schmidt is going to be able to catch him. Um, but Adam Schmidt finishing the first race in first and the second race in second, he is going to be the points champion of this race of this evening. If you're curious how that goes, how the points goes, how all of the uh, points are calculated, we do have that in our sporting code on our Pro-Am spreadsheet sheets, uh, standing sheets and all of that. Basically, every position is worth one. Did Jason Lyons just make a pass on Bill? What happened to Bill? It's Dan Marrera making a pass on Bill as well. So, there, something happened to Bill. Here we go, Bill going up the escape rope almost. Okay. So I think that we're gonna have to challenge Bill to changing his uh, his livery, his paint scheme here to a John Deere. What do you guys say? John Deere? John Deere, yeah. Or maybe New Holland. New Holland Ford? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, Michael Creo is now hot on the tail of Bill Hines, and there is a pass for Michael Creo. He is making up positions like no other. Is is he challenging him through that chicane? No, it looks like he's going to be giving up easy. He wants to follow in that draft of Michael Creo. Michael Creo is ahead. We have five minutes to go, and if you look at that timing tower, we were at 4.8 between Dan and Adam. And now they're at 4.5. And judging by quick math in my head, I don't think they're going to make contact with each other unless there's a massive slowdown, big mistake, or something somewhere. Um, so, yeah. I gotta love that. That, that Spider-Man thing, that is hilarious. Look at that. Look at that. There's Spider-Man in that car. Adam Schmidt leader of our season so far spider-man with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> anyways
Dawn Hunter here is in fourth. Let's just take a quickie look at Tyler Merigula. He's way, way back. Minute 41. Um, oh, you know what? He's taking turn one quite well. A lot of speed hitting that first apex. We were, I was actually giving him a few coaching lesson tips earlier. Uh, looks like it paid off in this lap so far. Let's see if the broadcaster's curse also pays off, but so far he's doing super well, not hitting any walls, not losing control, and um, he is now into the braking zone. This is the place that I think most drivers actually lose control. Michael Carrillo, though, is... Okay, I... Wall falling, Tyler. We missed this pass. How did this one happen? This is Dan Marrera and Michael Carrillo. Oh, that's cheating. You know what? Team orders at the maximum there on that one, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say that's team orders? Come on. Make them work for it, Dan. I want you make your teammate work for that one. You may be talking to him, but you gotta tell him you gotta earn this spot. Anyways, I'm just following along now with Jose Maria, that very, very unfortunate incident he had there with, um, with Jean Rivera. Looks like Jean Rivera currently is out, but Jose Maria not giving up. He is going to hammer through this track, hammer through this race and uh, make it to that finish line on the lead lap it's looking like so i'm gonna just follow along actually with dan mcfarlane and we are gonna go through a lap what does it look like here at the circuit of montreal this is circuit of Elise finland i I may be Canadian, but I do not have a French tongue. And this is one of the very first chicanes. It's a bit of an extended, advanced chicane. That quick, um, that quick left, extended space all the way to the right there. This is the second chicane. If you didn't like chicanes, this is not a track for you. Avoid that wall, but get as close to it as possible. You gotta rub those mirrors. And then this would be essentially another advanced chicane, a quick left, quick right. But this is where you're likely going to lose that rear end. Get as close to that wall as possible without getting the tail of your car smacking it. And if you didn't like chicanes, well here comes another one right here under braking, heavy braking. And turn right, hit the, sh the curves as much as you can. This is going to be turn 8, turn 9, heading towards the hairpin. This is the only variable turn that we've got on the whole circuit, and it's a tight one. you got to go all the way down to gear 1, as you can see on that dash. Real tight turn, lock the steering all the way to the right, accelerate as hard as you can, and away they go down the long, long straight towards the final chicane in the track. And... Oh, it doesn't say how fast he's going, not in viewer mode. They're both hitting at 260 kilometers per hour, and this is the final chicane. You gotta take all of the curbs as best you can and jump it, and that's gonna get you the very best lap time that you can get. And that is exactly why Dan is up in the lead. Oh, it looks like Michael Creel has passed Jason Lyons. How did that one happen? You know what? How did this one start? Well, here we go. This is heading into the chicane. They are battling into one of the chicanes. Jason Lyons gets ahead under braking, but it looks like throwing the fake and Michael Creo coming back at him and heading towards the hairpin. He's going to have to take him around the outside. And Jason Lyons is going to be on the inside. It looks like he is backing off and just going to give him the position. And that is exactly how Michael Creo got ahead.
So here is Dan McFarlane heading into that hairpin for the very last time. There is Adam Schmidt heading out of it as well. And then there is Shannon Mothra, as you can see, heading into that final turn, final hairpin, I should say. And here is Dan McFarlane. He is coming into the wall of champions, heading into the very final breaking zone. Don't mess it up right here, right now. And he is going to have a nice, clean set of corners. Now heading across that start finish line. Congratulations, Dan McFarlane. Welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge. Wow. Congratulations on winning this feature race for the first time in our races to win. That is one amazing drive from Dan. Adam Schmidt, congratulations for P2. Shannon Mothral for P3. Don Hunter in P4. Welcome to Porsche Cup Challenge. Hope you enjoy your stay. Can't wait to see you next week. And great drive to end up in fourth. There is Michael Creel in 5th, Jason Lyons in 6th, Dan Marrera in 7th, Bill Haynes in 8th, Gary Watson, uh, he's here in ninth position. There is Jose Maria, he may be a little unhappy about how he ended up in 10th. And a lot further back there is Ed Eisenring. He'll be coming across shortly. I think Ed was victim to the uh, unfortunate smash from Nicholas Nold. Uh, but Tyler, uh, Tyler is just all self-inflicted injuries. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make fun of Tyler until he finally says, "I'm gonna try and work on being consistent." <laughs> I think it's just, I, I think you know, Tyler's friends enjoy this more than, more than maybe he does. I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, it's funny, but uh, I swear I was put up for this. Anyways, and Tyler's now actually the very last driver to come across that start finish line. And there we go. So let's pull up. There is our finishing results. There is our finishing results of our 30 minute feature. Congratulations once again, Dan McFarlane for the win of the feature race. That is, I, I don't think that's happened in a long time now where a new driver comes in and just wins the 30 minute feature race. Great job, great, great drive, great job. Um, you know what? I I can't wait to see that happen again next week. I I wish you the best, and um, I I hope it does happen next week. Uh, Adam Schmidt, someone's gotta give him a run for his money, and um, I hopefully it can happen all season long next season. Uh, there's Adam Schmidt there, of course, in second. Dan Sh Shannon Mothrow in third. Don Hunter, Michael Creo, Jason Lyons, Dan Marrera, Bill Haynes, Gary Watson, Jose Maria, Ed Heisingring, Tyler Marigida. The Flipper crashed a whole bunch of times. Nice dude, though. Jean Rivera in 14th. Nicholas Nold and Troy Del Tano in 16th. Um... It looks like Troy didn't even bother starting with that feature. That's unfortunate. One of the nice things about our races is you have the heats, you have the sprint and the feature. If you didn't do very well in that sprint race, that 15 minute race, you have a chance to try again in that 30 minutes. And it's an absolute loss of learning if you if you don't. Um, so it's really unfortunate, but there you go. Those are our race results. And um, congratulations to all of our drivers there. Hope you all had a really great time. And with that, I think I'm going to be tuning out and going to take care of my baby, as you heard <laughs> in the background, if you were watching it live, uh, was having a real squeak in time. So I got to make sure that he's okay. I got to go make sure my wife's okay. And... Um, I'll see you guys all next week at Silverstone Legacy, and have a good evening.
Control. 